And the best chess player of all time is... Stockfish! But not just any version of Stockfish, the neural network version of Stockfish. And not just the neural network version of Stockfish, but the absolute most recent development build. It was just released one minute ago up on the development build site. It's 0.1 ELO stronger than the previous version. And that 0.1 ELO is going to make a huge difference in that 50,000 game match between new Stockfish and the previous development build. Eking out that one extra win, that's what that 0.1 point means. Illingworth Chess, improve your chess. What's up guys, it's GM Max here, and well actually the top 10 chess players of all time that we will be talking about here are not the computers, you know, computers they can have their own separate category, you know, you, you just keep your, your place over here, you know, listen to your, your human overlords, okay, like don't, uh, don't take us over. Uh, but no, instead we're going to be doing the top 10 best human players of all time, and before I get into the top 10, let me share with you a few honorable mentions. Actually, before I share honorable mentions, there is one thing I do want to say. Like, I know that a lot of you guys are going to comment like a keyboard always saying, Oh, this is the stupidest list of all time. Like, how could you come up with such an idiotic list? Like, how could you get your Grandmaster title? Like, this is the worst of all time. I am personally insulted by this list. I'm going to sue you for damages against my favorite player, Paul Morphy. No, okay, calm, cool, everyone calm your heart farm, hold your horses. This is of course just my personal opinion, but I have tried to base as much as possible on various objective data. So my perspective is not exactly going to be original, but I do consider it to be using my most reliable source of data I can possibly use in terms of the live uh, ELO ratings. So I don't know like, if you're familiar with like the top ELO ratings and who are the highest rate players all time. You're going to know some of the people on this list, but it's going to be a few surprises as well. But now let's go to the honorable mentions. And honourable mentions people who missed out on the top 10 are players such as, for example, uh, Hikaru Nakamura can see on the 11th spot. I mean, Nakamura definitely, if we're talking Blitz chess, he would be, at the very least, the top three all-time Blitz players. He's actually number one on the FIDE ranks list on Blitz at the time we're speaking. What's the other modern players like Ding Liren, uh, Alexander Grishuk? You know, a lot of people like with Grishuk getting, oh yeah, he just gets into time trouble, you know, not a... Serious contender, but actually his peak rating was no less than, well, let's find it here, 2810. So actually he's also rounded out all the players who have got over a 2800 rating at some point. And you have other players who got very close to a live rating over 2800, like Anish Giri, where we know that he did very well in the FIDE candidates in 2020 2021, even though he didn't qualify for a 2021 match against Carlson, but obviously a very strong player. Temo Rajabov as well, who's also had a little bit of a revival recently, winning a few tournaments. Ian Napomnishi, of course, he is the challenger to world champion Magnus Carlsen, so it may well be he might have a few good tournaments when more of the overboard play comes back, you know, with COVID starting to settle down. So obviously, you know, in some months' time, maybe Napomnishi will have its great one, gain 30 points and make the top 10. And then we have players like Morozevich as well. I think if I remember correctly, Morozevich, I think was... I get mixed up between Morozevich and Ivanchuk. I know that one of them was like the number one player in the world on the live rating list for one day. And I believe, if I remember correctly, it was actually Morozevich who was the number one for one day, and Ivan like he was the number two for, for one day. I keep getting confused, like, somebody can correct me in the comments if I got it wrong, but okay, since they're not part of the top ten, is sort of a minor detail, and well, if I'm wrong, I guess it goes to show that Grandmasters are not perfect either, contrary to popular mythological belief. So now that you know who the top ten are not, Let's discover who the top 10 are, starting with number 10. I don't have any like genius editing like with a 10 popping up. You guys can just sort of imagine it. I'll just use my fingers. There we go. We, uh, we got there in the end. Get the nice human touch. Uh, so number 10 on our list is Vasilin Topalov. You can see his picture here. And the reason I put Topalov at number 10 is the same reason I put all of these rankings. Because he achieved the 10th highest rating of all time. And he's actually a player, he was my favourite chess player around 2005, because he had this really great dynamic style of play. He reached a peak FIDE rating of 2816 in the 1st of July 2015 FIDE rating list. And what's really interesting about him is actually when he achieved this peak rating, he wasn't actually working that much on chess. Like he was sort of like relaxing, like not really putting as much effort in. But it sort of led to him actually having a much more fresh kind of feeling in the game, like having that clear head actually allowed him to get to a very high ranking in he actually even became, was like the world number one player back around like 2005, 2006. He had the highest rating in the world. You know, his best result was actually winning the 
FIDE World Championship in 2005, winning in San Luis, starting with a 6.5 out of 7 score against many of the very best players in the world at that time, the guys like Vichy Anand, Peter Lecco, and many other great players. So obviously he's a really, uh, a really great choice in that sense, and some people will think, okay, he should be even higher. I feel it's making his list based on how much I enjoyed their playing style, he would probably be higher, but, you know, this is uh, aiming to be as objective as possible, and with having a peak rank of 2816, I can't put him higher than 10th place. So, who is number 9 on our on our list? Uh, again, just trying to get a hand-brain coordination working here. I'll give you a chance to see if you can guess in the comments who it is. By the way, if you do are enjoying this list, or if you're even just enjoying, like, saying how horribly wrong my list is, then do make sure to smash that like button so that other people can see how horribly wrong this list is and feel, okay, I'm smarter than the Grandmaster when it comes to determining who the best chess players are. Well, number nine on our list is, wait for it, Vladimir Kramnik. And Vladimir Kramnik, yeah, obviously, passed World Chess Champion. He won the World Chess Championship, actually, by beating, winning Gary Kasparov in a 2000 World Championship match. And later, he also retained that title, beating Vasil and Topalov in 2006, a list of World Championship match. Some of you are familiar with the chess gossip might be aware of, like, the toilet gate sort of scenario between these two players, but this is not a gossip, uh, magazine, you know, if you want some gossip, I don't know, go to, like, your local shopping mall, buy the gossip mag, I mean, it's, it's not really my thing, you know, I, I like to talk about ideas, not people, but here we are, we're talking about a top 10 people list, so I guess I had to make an exception for you guys. Anyway, uh, so basically, Kramnik's peak rating was 2817 on the, for, on the October 2016 FIDE rating list, and you might know also he recently kind of retired from uh, playing chess. You know, he sort of just uh, said, okay, like, I'm not really enjoying playing a lot anymore. And as somebody who also retired from playing competitive chess two years ago, I can definitely simplify and, and sort of relate to that. But Kramnik had a really great technical style of play. Like, he's extremely good at taking these small, like, end game advantages or these small strategic advantages, taking them into a greater and greater advantage. When it comes to his technical play, I kind of consider him being sort of a bit like Karpov, but a more let's say, nuanced and developed version of Karpov. You're kind of standing on the shoulders of your giants, as it were. Uh, so, anyway, that's what I have to say about sort of Kramnik, you know, obviously. He's a player also who kind of developed a really exciting style in the final years of his career. Like, you'll notice that if we check, uh, for example, David Smerdin's recent fighting chess index for the most fighting players from 2015 to 2020, Kramnik was actually the highest person on that list of all the players in the world top 100. So obviously a very exciting, actually not all top 100, but all of the world top, I think 50 it was. There are fewer ahead of Kramnik, if I remember correctly, from the top 100, but he was like the top among the top 50 in terms of fighting spirit. So yeah, obviously a really fun player and definitely someone who can learn a great deal from, especially in terms of the strategic play. And also he is a person who did bring the Berlin into being like a mainline opening and basically the mainline against one he fought at the top level. So the next time you're complaining about the Berlin, like, oh, we've got another boring Berlin in the Super Tournament. Could be another bloody boring draw. Well, you have Vladimir Kramnik to blame. Let's now go on to number eight on our list. And number eight is... Let's get a drink of water for dramatic effect. Okay, so number eight on the list is... Vishyanand, also with a peak feed rank of 2817. And I can easily put, like, Kramnik or... And I go kind of interchange and like, I mean, object, I should probably put him in equal 8th to ninth place if we're being fair. But I guess if I had a press, I would sort of rank it under a little bit higher. Just because he kind of held the World Championship just a little bit longer than Kramnik. You know, he actually won the World Championship in 2007, beating Vladimir Kramnik in a match in Bonn, Germany. You know, before he had won a few FIDE World Championships. And also, was a player who for a very long time was kind of like the number, the second best player in the world for like over... 10 years before he became world champion, like, for example, with, you know, like, he had the world, champion, world championship match in 1995 against Gary Kasparov. He was actually leading that match after nine games before Kasparov hit back with a lot of wins of his own. You know, he also, uh, well, it was just, like, very, because like, these top two, top three players world for a long time. And he actually also could win my world championship match against players like Topalov in 2010, Boris Gelfand in 2012, and it took, basically, Magnus Carlsen in 2013 to be able to beat Anand. But one thing that's really impressive about Anand is his longevity, where even now, at the age of 51, he still has a rating of uh, 2753, so he's still in that top 20 players in the world, actually number 16 on the live ratings, which at the age of 50, where chess being said more and more of a young man or young person's game, well, definitely, that's a very impressive achievement. You know, even quite recently, Anand did win the world 
Rapid Championship in uh, 2000 and uh, testing my memory here, guys. I think it was in 2017, or if I remember correctly, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong. Like I, uh, you know, it's what I do. Like I uh, remember like the rough details, but you know, I don't remember every single fact if it's not like something that I can use, uh, you know, use so directly. Anyway, uh, enough about the idle trivia. Another point as well, like Anand was also like, the best rapid player, like for a very long time. Like in the 1990s, like Gaspar was the best classical player, but when the two of them played rapid chess, it was often Anand who would get the plus score. So a really great player, like, really amazing feel for the initiative as well. Like had this amazing intuition and very good preparation. Like he was one of these few players who managed to kind of keep the ideas of the older generation, like how to think using your own head and prepare your openings in your chest in that way, but also at the same time making the most of the modern technology and really sort of being well ahead of his peers, I think, in terms of using chess base and other online resources until, let's say, the last so many years or so when uh, our playing field started to equal in terms of this opportunity. Because remember, like, back in the old days, like, there weren't, you know, super strong chess computers to just tell us the best move in any position. Back, like, in, let's say, before, you know, the late 90s, most of the work was sort of done basically with human players, like, you know, working through the variations, trying to figure it all out. So it's quite impressive that Nan was able to basically be dominant in two different phases of the development of chess, which is something that not a lot of other players can claim, so mad respect to him. Uh, let's go on to the next person on our list. Number seven is... And this is where we start to get some more modern players after sharing some of the oldie but goldie players. And that is uh, the player Maxim Vichel Legrave is number seven on my list. And the reason I have MVL is not because... He looks a little bit like me, you know, with the glasses, the uh, brown hair. Well, I guess he's French and I'm not French, even though there is a rumour that my name of Illingworth is not just, uh, does not derive from Yorkshire, but actually derives from De Illingworth, which is French. Well, you guys can consider that theory for yourself, but on a more serious note, NBL has extremely great preparation. His peak FIDE rating was 2819 on the August 2016 FIDE list. And yeah, basically got the... GM title in 14 years uh, of age, uh, also France's uh, top player. And while well, he has very good preparation and also he's a very tricky player. Like I remember in the past, he was actually the number one player on the FIDE Blitz ratings, like even ahead of Magnus Carlsen. So definitely a player like a very good tactical style, but also a lot of good technical skill. Like obviously these top players, like even though they have a certain stylistic preference, obviously they're good all round players with no particularly glaring weaknesses. I mean, I guess with Envy up there is one weakness he's sort of shown. It's that sometimes in high-pressure situations, his nerves haven't necessarily been of the strength of, let's say, a Magnus Carlsen or some other players who have gone on to become world champions. We kind of saw in the FIDE candidates 2020 21, that sort of story. Actually, even before his time, he was sort of like, was basically just missing out on qualification almost every single possible way. But then in the candidates, yeah, he was leading equal after seven rounds, even with the best tiebreak. But in the second half, he... Had a few problems with his very narrow opening repertoire. We kind of got out-prepared in some case also where the... I guess his nerves are not as strong as some of the other players like Nepomnishi. So yeah, it's something that obviously... The good thing about having a clear weakness is that then if you fix it, you can really become an absolute beast. And I do believe that, well, we have not heard the last of MVL in terms of his chess career. And, well, we'll see what the future holds for, for him. Uh, of course, if you love to play 1e4 as white. If you love to play Knight off Grunfeld, then yeah, he's your guy. Uh, let's go to number six. And number six on the list is Shakriar Mamadjarov. So you see the picture of him. He's a great Aziri player. I know he's had the best Aziri player of all time, but then I remember there's another Aziri player on our list as well that I also will be uh, be mentioning. Uh, so his peak fair rating was 2,820 from the September 2018 list. And he's another player with a really great dynamic style, like amazing feel for the initiative. And what's really great is he's a really great player to watch. Like he doesn't ever like playing any sort of boring chess or such. Like he's always looking for ways to attack the opponent's king, ways to take the initiative, like a very, let's say, trademark Aziri sort of style. But he does it sort of better than any of the other ones, in my opinion. So, yeah, he's a player actually, and gives one of the few players who actually won the World Junior Championship twice, if I remember correctly. You know, also has uh, well, had a lot of really great tournament victories as well. He actually is a past World Rapid Champion also. So, uh, yeah, really... Great player, and I think he's one of the few players who basically managed to get to the top 10 in the world, even without, let's say, having particularly developed openings, but playing just more and like having a very good intuitive feel. So, obviously, a really great talent. You know, he's been to the number two in the world on the top of the world rankings. There, you know, he has been number one because Carlson was ahead of him on those times when he was at his peak. 
but yeah, really great player. And also he's not just like someone who is like a flash in the pan. Like he has been in that top 10 for a very long time. He was age 36. I still remember when it was like 2006 or 2007. And he was like in the, in or near that top 10. So definitely a mainstay in the world elite. And well, a player, I think again, we have not seen the last of, and I'm sure he'll continue to, well, we'll continue to enjoy his great attacking chess, which is always a delight to watch and always a delight also to share with you on YouTube so you guys can make sure to subscribe to the channel to get access to more videos like this one and enjoy Shakri Amamadrov's great attacking games in the future and many other great players as well that I've mentioned here. And yeah, also do make sure, yeah, to, like I said, comment below with your thoughts on this list and you know, which one you would have instead. And also you know, smash that like button. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. Okay, let's get to number five. So number five on our list is... Okay, I forgot to do a thing with the hands, but I remember it now. Uh, so we have Wesley So. And Wesley So is a really solid player. I think that quite a few players have actually underestimated him when creating their solid lists. Because, well, Wesley So is a very solid player. Like, he's one of these players who's very notorious for being very hard to beat. I think it's only in the last year or so when So has actually been beaten Magnus Carlsen twice in the finals of these, you know, sort of champions chess tour events. The people start to realize, okay, this is a guy that could actually become world champion potentially, even though he wasn't in the candidates for 2020 and 2021. So yeah, it's really uh, great to sort of see him play. Like he's one of these players who often like will have a good tournament strategy. Like, okay, I'm not going to like try to win every game, but I'm just going to play it safe and let the opponent sort of, you know, kind of overpress or if it's a draw, it's okay. So he's like very good in terms of tournament strategy being very consistent. But when he's on, like he can just outplay some of the very best players in the world. You know, see him do it many times with Magnus Carlsen. You know, there was one Fisher Random World Championship match a couple of years ago where he just completely outplayed Carlsen from these non-theoretical positions. He also very recently in the Super Chess Classic had this really great positional win against Fabiano Caruana, just completely outplaying him. And now thing also is great about Wesley is he's a very humble person. Like a lot of you may know like that when he will play like whenever he wins a title, well, like he'll always like be very thankful, like yeah, I thank my you know, my family and also, you know, very religious, like thanking his, uh, you know, his God, as it were. And then there's people that make fun of it, but actually I think it's a very endearing quality. Like this solid humbleness is not something that you always see. And I think that it just does put chess in a very good light to have this sort of representation uh, as well. And I'll be also about Wesley, so you might not uh, know that he originally is from the Philippines, but then he moved to the US sort of in his youth, uh, I think in his... Uh, I don't remember, like, the exact age, but it was around, like, 2013, 2014 or so, like, for studies. And then, yeah, some later years, I actually started representing the U.S. as well, which is one reason why the U.S. have a lot of really strong players, is that, well, a lot of them came to study in the U.S. with the different scholarship programs there. And then from there, many of them became, like, U.S. citizens as they, you know, sort of became more, uh, well, as they became, like, their home, as it were. Um, so in any case, let's now look at another player. Let's look at number four on our list. You know, we're getting to the pointy end of things here. So number four of my top 10 chess players all time is Levon Aronian, who I consider to be, I think, one of the very best players never to become world champion. He's actually one of the few top players I actually have met in person. Like, he's a super nice guy, like, super friendly, and I think a really fantastic role model for chess. I think he's definitely a big reason for the great boom of chess in Armenia. He's, like, a national hero there, and they really do respect their, their strong chess players in this country, which I always uh, admired about, uh, about it. Uh, and also in terms of his chess, well, his peak FIDE rank was 2830 and the March uh, FIDE rank was 2014. And he's 38 years old and actually there were many times he was not that far behind Carlson on the ranks, like only sort of a handful of like rating points behind him. So it definitely is a player like, let's say, if Carlson had not been around, then you know, we may well be talking about Aronian as being potentially the, the world champion, as it were, or a world champion. So yeah, basically he... Uh, well, he has this very creative style. Like, one thing is, like, you always kind of can recognize Aronian's games very quickly because he always has his own unique spin on different openings. He has a very deep understanding of chess that's kind of different like, to any any other players. Like, very good at coming up with different ideas. Also, like, not just on a strategic level, but also very tricky and good at finding resources to set problems to the opponent. So it's a really strong and powerful practical player. I think we're a very balanced style. Like, I think it's very hard to talk of any major weaknesses in Aronian's game. You know, one thing also that's really cool is that for a long time he was just playing like d4, c4, knight f3 as white. Then the last couple of years he actually started playing 1e4 and actually showing a lot of really great ideas and being a lot of world's top players in these lines as well. I think if there's one weakness that Aronian had it maybe is like the reason why he didn't become world champion, it is because when it comes to a really high pressure situation like the candidates, 
In the past, he has sort of been like leading the tournament, like first half doing very well. But like we saw with MVL in the cancer, he sort of fell, sort of falls a bit in the second half. Like the nerves maybe got the better of him and it stopped him from, well, being able to win the candidates and qualify for the match against Carlson or whoever, whichever opponent was there. But yeah, he's been like in the top 10 players in the world since 2005. He's still a really great player and you know, it wouldn't surprise me to see him make some sort of comeback. You know, his rating is 2781. He is number five in the world. So even though at age 38, he is one of the older players in the world top 10, I do think he could potentially make a comeback and get back to that 2800 plus air that he was in before. All right, guys, let's get to the number three on our list. So number three is Fabiano Caruana. So with Fabiano, like a lot of people, like they remember Fabiano's like for getting that seven out of seven score in the Sinkfield Cup, and also he's uh, well, he's a US player, but you know with some of the US players, like they were not born in the US among the top players, like we saw like Wesley So and Hikaru Nakamura and some other examples. But Caruana was actually born in the US, but he later moved to Italy. You know, he's uh, obviously uh, of Italian descent. And then later, ended up moving back to the US later on, actually around, I think, the time of the Sinkfield Cup uh, 2014 at Breakthrough Tournament is where the magic started to happen. You know, that was where he still got basically, you know, got very close to his peak rating. You know, his peak FIDE rating is 2844 on the October 2014 rating list. I think his live rating even got to 2851. Uh, so, yeah, really great player. And again, I think to me, when I think of his style, I can sort of see him as being almost like kind of a modern day Botvinnik, having extremely far opening preparation, being a really great calculator, having a great sort of depth of thinking. Because, I mean, in the past, I used to say, like, Kawania is amazing in classical, but he's not that great of a blitz player. But in the last year, he's actually become a lot stronger in blitz and rapid as well. And it's generally, he's not just one of these players that finds brilliant moves when you give him time to think, but also has a very good feel for the game as well. So, yeah, with Kawania, it's really hard to speak of any real major weaknesses when talking about him. You know, he is currently the world number two player, you know, not that far behind Magnus Carlsen, at the two players rate over 2,800, as it were. Um, so, yeah, the player who certainly, I really have a great appreciation for his games. So it was always a lot of fun to, uh, well, see, like, the depth of his thinking as such. I think it was even Magnus Carlsen who once said, I don't remember the exact quote, but there was something along the lines of that he felt Caruana was the one person, like, when he played, he didn't feel like he was sort of, like, just better than him, but I felt they were kind of competing on more of an equal footing when they played each other. And, I mean, that's reflected also results like the... You know, when Kawana won the 2018 FIDE candidate take by a full point, if I remember correctly. And also they played in the 2008 Carlson Kawana World Championship match, where it was a 6 6 tied result, uh, all draws, which tells you just how solid Kawana is and how you know, the world's best player Carlson wasn't able to get the win against him. And it took the rapid playoff before Carlson was finally able to win the match. So, yeah, that's what I have to say about Fabiano Kawana. Really great player, and again, I do think that we're going to see a lot more from him in the future, because after all, he is only 28 years of age, so we think we can say that he's still, that his prime years are still ahead of him. I, it would be my uh, very, uh, well, very enthusiastic prediction. Okay, so top two. So who is two, and who is one? Well, this year, I mentioned some of the names already, like the for this, so you already heard the names of top two people, but what is the order? Okay, guys, let's find out. So number two on my list of the best star uh, chess players of all time based on the like so the objective playing strength number two is gary kasparov and i think yeah with kasparov like, it's hard not to say kasparov like, having a big smile on your face I think that a lot of people like watching this feel like let's say the people like from my generation maybe a little bit older well probably you grew up with like gary kasparov like being the you know the best chess player of all time you know world champion from 1985 from being anatoly karpov also a great world chess champion to then all the way to 2000, where I mentioned he lost that World Championship match with Vladimir Kramnik. But even after losing a match, like when he retired from professional chess in 2005 from the Linares tournament, uh, which he actually ended up winning even his last tournament as well. Well, he was still the number one rated player in the world on the FIDE ratings. Now, there are rumors there were some politics involved as to why he didn't manage to get that rematch against Vladimir Kramnik that the fans were hoping for. Of course, the politics is not really the purpose of the channel, but of course, it's good to know a little about the history. And of course, yeah, Kasparov, he was, uh, well, born in uh, in Baku, Azerbaijan, but at that time, obviously, this was part of the USSR, so he represented the Soviet Union, and later in 992 onward, represented uh, Russia. Um, so, yeah, basically, he was a really great tactical style, really great attacking player. I think when it comes to field initiative, there are a lot of players who would say that he basically had the best sort of 
calculating ability, the best sort of attacking feel, best tactical skill I give any player ever. Nowadays, I would say actually I think that Castle is up to that level as well, that he is as good as Kasparov in that area. But tonight, Kasparov like, is definitely a very special name and he definitely enriched Chess a lot with not just his really great calculation and tactics I mentioned, but also he really brought opening preparation to a whole new level where people at the time they thought, okay, you thought this was deep opening preparation going to, I don't know, move 20. Well, Kasparov, he would take that same line and go all the way to move 40 and beyond. So it's a really powerful analytical skill, you know, not just in his games, but in his preparation. And that gave him a massive entry over his opponents. And if we're looking in terms of the domination that a world champion has displayed over his rivals, I think the only ones who really are up there with Kasparov maybe ahead of him are probably people like Bobby Fischer, Jose Capablanca, and also ones like, let's say, Paul Morphy and Greco. I think these are the only names that really come to mind in terms of the level of dominance that are champion has had over their, let's say, contenders of, uh, and contemporaries of the time, uh, along with Kasparov. So yeah, really great player. And I think that if anyone ever has that feeling of, okay, um, I'm not particularly enjoying chess at the moment, well, just play for a bunch of Kasparov games. I'm pretty sure that your passion for chess will very quickly come back. So okay, who is the number one? I think you guys probably have guessed who it is already, but let's go to it. Number one is Magnus Carlsen. Highest rated chess player on the FIDE rankings of all time, with a peak FIDE rank of 2882. Carlsen became a grandmaster at the age of 13 from, as from Norway, so one thing that's really I think, very inspiring about Carlsen's story is that, you know, what we see is that the top chess players of all time are actually very multicultural from a lot of different backgrounds. So it goes to show it doesn't matter whether you're born in a top chess country like Russia or a country with not as much a chess culture such as Norway, it's still possible to become the very best if you know you do the right things. And as the rain is falling down, let's uh, share some of Carlson's great achievements. You know, he became the World Chess Champion in 2013 by beating Vishu Anand, and he beat him very convincingly in this match as well. I forget the exact score, but it was only like two to three points uh, margin. And then he also defended that World Championship title against Anand in 2014, against Kayakin in 2016, and against Kawana in 2018. And if we're looking at across the different time trials, I think that Carlson might actually be even more dominant in some ways in Blitz and Rapid than he is in Classical. Just a very strong player with very unique intuition. I think that when it comes to the intuitive strength of play, there isn't really anyone who rivals Carlsen. Yeah, there are players like Kramnik had a great sort of, let's say, strategic or positional intuition. Players like Kasparov have a great dynamic or tactical intuition. But Carlsen is the one player who kind of has the best of all of the other best players that I mentioned. Like he has all of those strengths that I mentioned about the other players without any of the weaknesses so if he needs to attack in a position, he knows exactly how to do it and take control of the game. If it's a position where he just has to grind away, well, I'm sure you guys know about how Carlsen very often manages to win by sort of getting some ending that maybe is equal or just a tiny bit better. But he just keeps grinding away, find a way to set practical prompts to the opponent, and that gets him the win. So, uh, yeah, I could say a lot more about Carlsen. I do think that he is going to be the world champion for quite a few more years, is my feeling. You know, he just really has a level of dominance at the moment that's really quite impressive, especially when you consider there are always just like the computers, the internet, all these things that really have equalized things quite a lot, given a lot more opportunities for players even at the top to improve their chess. And yet still, Carlson remains at the top. You know, really also one thing that people also say about Carlson has really great physical stamina, and that's part of what allows him to be able to outplay his opponents in the seventh hour of the game. So yeah, that's my top 10 list for the top 10 best chess players of all time. And as I said, I base this on the objective strength of the players. I think the FIDE ranks is the most reliable way to determine the objective strength of the players. Do make sure to comment below with you what your top 10 list would be, who you think the top 10 best chess players of all time are. Make sure to smash that like button, subscribe for more videos like this, Leading of Chess, and I will see you in the next video when this rainstorm finally ends.